Welcome to I'm the Worst Podcast. If you aren't aware, this is the podcast that has comedians share what they're the absolute worst at as we explore some of their biggest failures in life and we find ways to laugh at it. I do have manners, so the first thing I want to say is thank you for supporting the podcast, giving it a listen. If you want to go the extra mile, take a small moment to like it, review it, subscribe to it. Anything like that helps out in a huge, huge way. The bigger we grow, the better the podcast will get. That's my promise. I am the host of this podcast, maybe the worst host, who knows, uh, Jeff Buck. You can find me more uh, by looking me up at funny as Buck on Instagram, Twitter. I feel a lot of stuff and I put it all out in the world because, um, you know, if you're feeling at something, you're getting better at it as well. So feel free to laugh at my journey if you want. Uh, but it's not about me today. Today, we're uh, joining me today for, to talk about what they're the worst at is not only a great uh, joke writer and a great stand-up comedian, she also creates uh, awesome web comics that are watercolor cartoons. I'm a solid fan of them. Uh, right here, right now, Paige Weldon, everybody. Paige. Oh, round crazy of for applause. You. Yeah, I got two Hi. cats in the room and they were just like, what? Oh, <laughs> She's man, here. It's they're crazy. losing it. <laughs> yeah. Good How's time. it going? Uh, it's going good, Paige. How are you? Oh, I'm I'm perfectly fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, sweet. Anything anything crazy happened today? Just no, an, I'll be honest. No, day? I mean I'm grateful that the humidity is lifting. Can I can I say that? I mean, not a great day for my allergies and my hair yesterday uh, and the day previous. So I'm feeling grateful for. <laughs> that's good. I'm in the, I'm in the. I'm in the opposite boat of that. I love the humidity. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm from Louisiana. So I'm like raising mm-hmm. this humid environment. And then LA just dries me out. My skin gets all, it's horrible. Um, yeah. I'm from, I'm from Southern California. So I'm not used to humidity. Oh, so you're used at to all. it. Um, yeah. <laughs> cool. Fair enough. This is uh, yeah. Then the rain is gone and, uh, and yeah, it's getting dry again. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not excited for summer. I'm let, let's not get it twisted, but I, <laughs> um no worries uh yeah summer summer here is rough it's just dry and hot but who cares people don't care about summer in california summer summer everywhere you are uh they get it we don't need to yeah, do we don't I need mean, to dive into it regardless um, yeah i do want to say i uh i am a fan of your web comics for those that don't know anything about you or anything like that uh you should just check out pages um web comics um do you know where they can work uh actually you know before we get into anything um just go ahead and plug anything you have to plug where people can find you what projects you're working on any of that stuff um you can just follow me on instagram at page weldon um i have on i have a separate account where i've been posting my cartoons at page weldon art i don't do them as often as i would like because uh since the world has reopened, I've been busy doing stand up. So follow me on uh, just Paige Weldon for I post clips and stuff. Um, I have an album. You can you cannot not get it on Spotify anymore, much like many comedy albums. But you can uh, you can buy the CD from AST Records. I did the art for it. So um and you can listen to it on like Apple Music and basically everything that isn't Spotify. <laughs> no, buy the CD. It's better. It's tangible. Yeah. It's a piece of artwork. You can put it on a That's shelf. That's what I say. You, you can buy the CD and then you can also listen to it on your favorite streaming platform. Yeah. CDs yeah. are like going to be the new, um, you know, they're like the vinyls. It's going to be hip to collect them yeah. as, the, uh, as the youth come into the world. Um, yeah, know. there'll be people who are like, I like when it has scratches on it. I right. Like when it <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. My buddy has like a, a huge shelf of DVDs. He's a big movie buff, collects all these DVDs. And uh, I realized I don't even have a DVD player. And then I have like the new MacBook, so it doesn't have a disk drive. So like if you gave me a DVD, I'd have no way to watch it. I'm pretty, pretty bummed I don't- about that. Yeah, I was thinking about I've thought about buying like a, seeing if I could find on Facebook Marketplace or something an old DVD player because, you know, also like everyone talks about this and yet nothing has changed that SAG sends DVDs for your consideration. And uh, every time I get them, I'm like, well, this is trash. Like I have <laughs> no way to yeah, play this. 
it's the best way to beat pri- uh, piracy now. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah. no one's going to pirate this because they don't want to go through the trouble of buying a DVD player. They have no way to consider <laughs> or, this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They can't. Co- I've considered throwing it away. Uh, Consider <laughs> throwing it away. It. I've asked myself, why have I been sent a DVD set of a Netflix show? You know, yeah, things yeah, like yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. Um, awesome. Yeah. I. Um, but to circle back to your art, I think about the coffee divider a lot. Uh, which is one of your genius inventions. Um, So big fan. I think it could be a real invention that you put out into the world and uh, it'd be great. Uh, Yeah. For those that don't know the coffee divider, a genius invention that Paige made. I made a uh, series called Genius Inventions. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of, I think a lot of people have a lot inventions. of them are great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot I, of them are great. But the coffee divider, I think it's Shark Tank worthy. I think. Thank you. You you put that product into development, find someone who can make it a little coffee mug or whatever. Yeah. And then, yeah, you just have a divider that goes through the middle to keep half of your coffee warm. I hate the, getting up and refilling my coffee. I, the, I, I feel like my own camp. My own diner waitress in my own home, you know, coming by. I have to go grab the coffee pot to refill. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, um, it's the worst. Uh, it, that is the worst. Um, so, yeah, the yes, great invention. A huge burden. <laughs> um, but speaking of things the worst, so I'll get right into it. I'll, I'll give you a tidbit of something that I feel like I'm the worst at. And then we can kind of transition into what you've come prepared with. Um, lately I've been realizing I'm really the worst at like blending into like a social situation, whether it be talk too much or talk too little or saying the wrong thing. Um, I was at a, uh, a small, quick story. I was at a Kings game recently. I'm not a hockey fan necessarily. Are you a hockey fan? I'm not against hockey. I, uh, oh, you're I against it. I, no, I'm not against oh, it. Oh, okay. I was like, I was like, I am actively against hockey. Jeff. The fact that you went to a game appalls me. Um, no, no, no. I, got I, I wouldn't, not against but I wouldn't be like huge fan. I follow it. You got know? it. Um, so very similar to me then. It was like someone gave me free tickets that were like ice side or rink side, whatever you would call it. Uh, that's how little I know about the sport. Um, yeah, on the rocks, on ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We were right on the rocks. Um, yeah. <laughs> So they gave us free tickets. I was like a cohort, like a, the boss of a friend. I don't know. It doesn't matter where they came from. Free tickets, good seats. Uh, so we go, we drive down, um, we park. And in the parking lot, we meet this guy who's like, hey, you guys want free tickets? And we're like, no, thanks. We already have some. But that's, that's how bad hockey is. I guess people are just giving away tickets. They're like, here, you can just have them. Um, so we're like, no, thanks. And then we're like, that was kind of weird. We get to the arena. We get our snacks and everything. And then we go to enter to where we sit. And I guess with hockey, they don't let you sit until they drop the puck or something like that. Like there's certain breaks. I don't know. So we're sitting there waiting to sit. And, um, and the guy who was in the parking lot shows up and he's like, Oh, um, where are you guys at? Anyways, he's like literally one row in front of us. We're like, screw it. We'll take the free tickets. There's technically a better seat. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's me and my buddy and my buddy sits between me and this guy. So they're talking the whole time. I have no idea what they're talking about, but they seem like they're having a great time. And then the guy turns to me and he goes, what about you? Uh, you a big hockey fan. And I was like, (laughs) uh, and they've been talking for like 30 minutes or so. I was like, oh, I don't really know anything about it. I grew up in Louisiana. We never even, I never even seen hockey, you know, (laughs) like, I don't, you know, this and that. And uh, I just proceeded to make jokes about the entire thing. I called the big uh, ice cleaning thing, a big ice Roomba. I don't even know the name of it. I know it's a Zamboni. Yeah. The Zamboni. I was like, (laughs) the Zamboni is a big ice Roomba, you know, making stupid jokes that aren't even good. (laughs) Just like, there's a little thing they keep next to the goalie, uh, net that like i guess wets the ice maybe but it looks like a tiny keg and i asked the guys like is that so they can do tiny keg stands and the guy's like i don't get your jokes and i was like all right i'm not for everybody uh (laughs) and so or it just wasn't being funny and uh so then my buddy's like hey come to the come to the concessions with me and so i go to the concessions with him and he goes you blew it man what were you doing i was like what are you talking about because that's the president of the team's like best friend like childhood friend he has season tickets i was hamming it up with him the whole time we exchanged phone numbers he said we can go to any game we want for free to just text him and i was like i didn't hear any of this it was so loud in there and they're talking about what they're talking about uh, and then he asked me if I'm a hockey fan. I was like, no, it stinks. Who cares about it? And this guy's like best friends with the president of the 
LA Kings. Uh, anyways, so uh, I realized I just fuck up in social situations. And this guy was so mad at me because he had like an in. I guess my friend was a hockey fan. He's like, I could have been to every game now. But did but, what you did you really ruin that? Like, I feel like at worst, like your friend could just say like, he was he was just kidding. He didn't really mean. I don't that. know, man. Like, I, that, you that, were that, really you really dug in. You think the guy's like a big deal. His name's uh, Luke Robitaille, the guy who owns it, and he, there's a statue of him outside the Staples Center. So like we leave, and the guy's taking pictures of the statue, and I was like, oh man, this guy was a big deal. <laughs> like I don't, you know. Like, but maybe that guy could have had a little more sense of humor about it. Is what he I definitely think. could have. I mean, I my little that... mini peg joke was a was a banger. <laughs> and he was yeah, like, oh. and he must have. I mean, maybe he didn't realize that you didn't know who he was and you th- he thought you were yeah. like trying to get under his skin because you knew who he was or something but i don't know i get that i feel like there's also a bit of a defense mechanism thing where it's like when you don't know know anything about something you, you like make jokes about it i certainly yeah, have yeah. done that or you're no, like, i wasn't like being mean about yeah hockey i was just being like hey these things are funny looking <laughs> you know like which whatever. you could also be mean about hockey if you want to i mean i, I guess <laughs> you could fair. take it too far but like <laughs> who cares <laughs> yeah fair enough um yeah i mean ultimately i don't care because i'm not that big of a fan of hockey so i'm not yeah it doesn't hurt me but it's just my buddy was like oh, i would have loved to have been that guy's friend but i feel like our friendship's room now I was like i don't know text them it's fine but uh yeah yeah who knows know. <laughs> but i just yeah i'm just like sometimes my honesty i'm just like too honest and i just say too much of the i don't know like if i would have just been like yeah i'm a, i'm an okay fan or whatever everything you know it probably would have been fine but no i hear you i do the same thing i am constantly giving unnecessary information or answering like answering a question that i didn't really need to give a long answer to i i give too much info so i get it <laughs> yeah um but uh, we're not here to talk about what I'm bad at, um, <laughs> we're here to talk about what you suck at, Paige. What are you bad at? What have you failed at? Um, what do you um, feel like you're? What do you feel like you're the absolute worst at? Has everyone that you've had on made the joke where they're like, "Nothing"? Has everyone done that? <laughs> no one's done that yet. No. Okay, fuck. I could have just done it. Um, okay. Uh, I I was thinking the first thing that came to mind when you asked me about this is I'm really bad at grocery shopping and cooking for myself. Ah. I really am so like (laughs) i just i don't get it i cannot process it i'm not proud of this also i feel like it's embarrassing but i just every time i'm like oh i'm gonna grocery shop for like something i can make i'm gonna try and like save money and not eat out as much or whatever i just i fail (laughs) okay i'm hearing you uh i can relate and it's funny it's a common thing I will say at least like two or three guests now have mentioned being bad at cooking. Is it the actual cooking of the food that you're bad at? Or is it just getting around to cooking the food that you're bad at? I think I'm fine. If I have a recipe and I'm cooking, I can, you know, like certainly like, you know, it's not that I've never cooked anything in my life. It's just that one, I, I don't really enjoy it. I I don't go, oh, wow, how satisfying that I made myself that meal. It's (laughs) like, that was a pain in the ass. Like, (laughs) it saved me money because I didn't, you know, get takeout or whatever. But like, like I, I, for a long time, like I stopped going to Trader Joe's during the pandemic because every time uh, I saw it, it, there was like a massive line. And I was like, I guess I go to Ralph's now. And I like started trying to cook more because Ralph's has less of the like, frozen stuff that's like as stuff good that, yeah, yeah but i've recently started going back to trader joe's and i i just feel like it's built for somebody like me okay. and like i just i love to buy like a frozen vegan tikka masala and just <laughs> nuke that when i get home from a show i just i like i would love to be somebody who meal preps and who like yeah, yeah. intentionally who like buys vegetables and then eats them before they go bad but i've i just cannot seem to be that person it's so time consuming the meal prep and the, I, I there was a stint where i've like actively tried to do it and you really have to like schedule like okay tuesdays i meal prep but then it's yeah. like with meal prep you can only meal prep for up to like three or four days because no one you don't want to eat like soggy vegetables on the fifth right. day and like you'd have to reheat it in the oven 
to get them to be good again anyway. So at that point, just cook them raw. You know, it's a, it's just a, it's a lot of time and a lot of like, uh, and yeah, especially if you have a busy work schedule or like a uh, odd work schedule, then sometimes like you just don't have the time or motivation to cook at like when you're supposed to, you know, it's like, oh, I just got off of work. It's seven o'clock. I should cook, but also I just worked for 12 hours or whatever, not 12 hours, but eight hours. Well, I do think comedy affects it because it's like, if I was somebody who, you know, didn't work at night, I would (laughs) maybe have more time and energy and want to like make dinner. But I feel like often I'm eating after a show or something. And it's Mm -hmm. like the last thing I want to do is like get into a whole process of making something. Um, and I also just didn't like my growing up, like my parents didn't really cook a lot. Like my dad would barbecue sometimes and like, but we just really didn't like, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a lot of hamburger helper, oh, you know, sure, yeah. things of that nature. So I just, I don't even have like family recipes or something I could be doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I, I mean, like, I think for me growing up, you know, we, we had, my mom cooked a lot, but it was, yeah, it was a lot of hamburger helper, just like out of the box meals every now and then she would do like her spaghetti or something, but it was like, it's spaghetti, you know, like everyone can yeah. just you know boil pasta and throw tomato sauce on it um anyways but yeah so i i feel yeah i can definitely relate to that um is there a reason you feel like you're bad at this is it just like the lack of motivation or is it just like uh again like just the schedule of being too busy i think it's schedule i think it's i don't actually derive any joy or satisfaction from the process Mm -hmm. like i don't so there's that And yeah, I think I just, there's a mental block against it. It could be that I just never like learned the basics of, of what, like, but I, I just think going out of town a lot too. It's like, I will like buy food and then it's like, also the minute you buy groceries, they sound so bad to you you're like (laughs) I would rather eat anything else yeah it's true I'm like I don't want to have to put all this together Uh, yeah I'll I'll like be like you know what I'm I'm gonna make this thing this week and then it's like the night like I have a night where I don't have a show or something I'm like I'm gonna make something and then it's like but I would also (laughs) love to just go get a California burrito and just like (laughs) (laughs) so much easier too um Yeah, I feel, yeah, I'm also, I, I cook for a living, like, uh, my day job is, as uh, as like a line cook. And so like the, the last thing I want, my excuse that I usually fall on is like, I've been doing this all day. I don't want to yeah. come home and do it. And then like, have to like messy up my own kitchen and then clean it. I just did that for eight hours, yeah. you know? And it's like, I don't have to want to repeat that. And I wonder if there's like other occupations like that, uh, <laughs> where it's just like, a maid or something just has the filthiest house ever because they're just like well i've been cleaning everyone else's house i don't want to fucking clean yeah. my own or something you know it's yeah. like um yeah or yeah who knows there's a plumber who just like lets their toilet back up because they <laughs> they're like i don't want to deal with it yeah um, i mean i think it's like the classic thing of like people asking a server like well what's your favorite thing here and they're like i don't know i work yeah, here i, I don't, hate everything I hate here this. it's like i've been here for five years everything tastes the same at this point and it's the yeah. Worst. Uh, yeah i mean yeah, I, I guess with comedy there's a bit of that of like you know after you do a lot of shows or something and then you know you're just, you don't want to be on anymore, you know, Mm -hmm. or you don't want to go to a comedy show as an audience member. Oh, sure. It's like, I have that. It's like, uh, my girlfriend will be like, Oh, do you want to go see this comedy show? I'm like, why? (laughs) I was like, I've done too many. It's like, I don't want to like, only if I can stand in the back, like, can I stand in the back? It's like, what? And then I'll be like, why am I not on the show? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. uh, But no, uh, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Well, why do you want to see them and not me? No. Um, anyways, um, yeah um but yeah uh, okay so are you trying to is this something that you want to work at getting better or are you just like throwing throwing the towel in and be like who cares I think I am at a point in my life where I have accepted this about myself mm-hmm. I think especially like during the pandemic it was like it was much easier to try and like cook and do that because it was like the only thing to do 
And I think that's when I really learned that I don't enjoy it is like, I feel like even in when I had the time, mm-hmm. I was like, all right, I mean, I, <laughs> and I, I try to, you know, what I, what I want to be better at and what I do try is, um, I try to keep stuff in my apartment that is like quick to make, because I know I don't like to make stuff. Like I always have like oatmeal for breakfast. Cause mm-hmm. that's, like, I can just microwave that. Um, or like, uh, you know, yeah, like frozen stuff from Trader Joe's and stuff, just honestly to keep me that like the dinners are really so I don't spend a bunch of money. Got That's it. where it starts to get bad. So it's more of like a financial thing and not even really like a I should eat healthy thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bit of both, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's like there is a part of me that's like I'm a grown woman. I shouldn't like constantly be defaulting to getting a California burrito, but like I There's said, an avocado in there, you know? Yeah. Listen, I'm, I'm a, so I'm a SoCal babe and that's yeah. just me. And yeah, yeah. there's something I can change about that. It is what it is. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. For me, it was always like, Oh, I should eat better. Uh, I need to, but now it's like, but in, in Los Angeles or Southern California in general, um, there's so many healthy options for eating out too. I mean, there's yeah. like, uh, I mean, so that's not even really that hard anymore. It, it, yeah. So for you, it's the financial aspect of like, oh, I sh- it's, I but it's you're paying for the, both. you're paying the, for the convenience, you know, and you're paying yeah. for saving time. Time is money instead of having to cook your own burrito for like an hour and a half. Yeah. I know that seems like a very long time to cook a burrito, but like, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, you're just like, you do the quick transaction and you get what you want. Um, yeah. It's like, it's partially the financial thing and also just like, Yeah. I think also when you're, um, you know, like I think of like when I'm out of town and I end up on like a bad, uh, sort of a streak of just like eating out a bunch, you always feel worse too, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's why I try to be like, okay, it's like, I'm not going to like eat out every meal in a day, but like if I get takeout for dinner a few nights a week, I'm not going to like, that's okay. But I just think you kind of have to offset it, you know, Mm -hmm. by having things that, because it's like the the part of me that acknowledges, Hey, this is how I am. And I know I don't like doing this. So why don't I play into my laziness and just have things at home that are easy, you know? Yeah. Um, Yeah, It's true. Yeah. And it's like the best food takes the longest to make, which is so upsetting. Um, yeah, they just need true. to they need to find a way to make good food um quicker you know yeah um, I mean I've had times of like I have a slow cooker and I like had a couple times where I would make like um something in the slow cooker and then the mm-hmm. and then that's also a thing where you go okay and then I have this all week yeah and then yeah, yeah. but then it's like oh god I'm eating the same thing every don't eat day chili all week <laughs> yeah it's like, like I really don't know if this is great for me <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> speaking of, like there's the slow cooker I give into like some people give into those fads like kitchen uh kitchen fads of like okay this is this is the new way of like I guess it could be a diet trend or whatever but but I'm thinking more like have you gotten into the air fryer craze like did you try that out I do have an air fryer um I it was a few years ago, my parents, they have an air fryer and they Mm -hmm. love it. Yeah. And they got me one for Christmas and I was like, okay. And I thought like, I'm never going to use this. I don't cook at all. But what I love it for is it's really good for like leftovers. That's what I hear. I have have a buddy that swears by it. It really like, you can take like things. day old French fries, which you would normally mm-hmm. just throw out. Cause like whoever wants to eat those and it'll yep. bring them right back to life. Like brand it new really does. Like I've had times where I like get food and I get it home and the fries are like kind of cold or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'll throw them in the, in the air fryer for a minute just to like give them yeah. new life. And it is also really good for certain like frozen foods, you know, like Mm -hmm. what something you would put in the oven, um, you could put in the air fryer instead. So it's like, I don't do like, I'm not doing the like diet trend of like air frying instead of frying or whatever. I almost exclusively use it for leftovers or like frozen like i'll get from trader joe's they have like frozen hash brown patties yeah. and i'll put it's them like in a there. better a better microwave essentially like the alternative yes. to a microwave yeah or toaster oven uh those were like i remember a buddy of mine used to have those 
Toaster ovens Toast, were. Toaster oven basically does the same thing as an air fryer, honestly. Mm, okay, <laughs> it's <fair>. pretty similar. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. yeah, that. So yeah, those crazes were. Uh, I don't know. I haven't given in the air fryer, but it's tempting. A lot of people swear by it more and more. So maybe I'll give it a shot. I don't um, think I would have sought it out if my parents didn't get it for me because okay. they. It was like they were so into it that they were like, "This would be a good gift." What's and your? At first, I was like, "Eh." but now I love it. That's cute. Um, what is your favorite uh, go-to quick meal then? If you have a... Uh, like at home? Sure. Yeah, yeah, or, at home. Yeah, yeah, um, at, home, at home. I mean, I do love to make a bowl of oatmeal. Uh, okay. There's these like <laughs> Kodiak protein oats. Have you seen the, the one with the bear on it? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'll slice up some banana in there, some honey. Um, I, and I do really like the Trader Joe's like frozen vegan tikka masala. All right. <laughs> it's pretty good. I mean, is it like I went to an Indian restaurant? Absolutely not. But right. is it pretty good? Cause some good of the enough, like Trader yeah. Joe's frozen stuff sucks. Like I'll be like, oh, this looks good. And then I'll make it and be like, hmm, sad, which is like a, another thing is like, there is something about making yourself a meal that doesn't taste that great. That mm -hmm. feels a lot sadder than getting <laughs> like getting takeout or like at a restaurant being like, Oh, I don't love this. Yeah. Like, there's like just you something... failed at making food and you're like, I should have just had like, someone else make it a sad moment where I <laughs> put an effort and then it didn't. <laughs> yeah. Cause then it's like you, your time and your time's wasted even more. Um, Cause you're not, you're not enjoying the final product. Um, I feel you on that. I, I, the, I do the, I feel like I, you eventually graduate like, uh, like early high school me was like pizza rolls, bagel bites. Like those were the quick, easy foods that I enjoyed. I think there was like one, like maybe like pasta dish that I used to heat up in the microwave. That was like, but now I'm like, now I do like, Oh, like you said, you get the Trader Joe's, uh, took a masala. I do like dumplings that all like boil that come pre-frozen, which tastes pretty close to like fresh dumplings. Um, so you kind of find as you grow up, like, Oh, I should do adult quick food, not just like teenage yeah. stoner quick food. That's just going to like taste horrible. Um, yeah. And you also just like can't anymore. It's like, if I was as a grown true. woman, like it's I think about like when I was in middle school and high, like early high school I would come home and I would have had lunch at school that you mm -hmm. know like a hot pocket whatever you know and then I would come home at like get home at like 3 30 and make a whole box of pasta roni <laughs> and eat that and like watch king of the hill and yeah, yeah. the good the good old days <laughs> and then like also eat dinner later and just yeah. have all the energy in the world yeah if yeah, I ate true. a box of pasta roni at 3 p.m., <laughs> I would sleep the rest of the day. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, Damn, it's good. It tastes good. <laughs> man. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know, but I think you're right. It's almost like you can't do that anymore sometimes because some of the stuff you like doesn't even taste that good anymore. I think I tried yeah. to eat pizza rolls again and it's just like immediate indigestion now or just was like, this yeah. doesn't... It used to maybe... Maybe they changed the recipe. I don't know, but maybe I just like <laughs> as a kid, I mean, you're just, like immune yeah. to shittiness. And you're just like, some yeah. of that stuff holds up and some of it doesn't yeah. like cereal will always be good. Mm -hmm. You know, certain things are like they, you know, ca candy, things like that. Always good. Yeah. But there's certain... certain candy, though. Now it's like it's too much sugar. Maybe. Yeah. Like more. what? Uh, I'm trying to think maybe like a I don't know, maybe like a a nerd's rope is seems like yeah. too much too much intake for me at this point yeah like i would uh, never have a fun dip now or like know? a slurpee now it's like i used to be able to suck down like two slurpees or ices yeah. is what we had growing up uh where i was at but like now it's like i go to get a slurpee and i'm like immediately like okay i need i'm sleepy now and that's probably because i'm diabetic now <laughs> and this was too yeah. much sugar you know it's like oh i used to beg my mom when we would get uh we stop at am pm or arco or whatever i would yeah. beg her to get me an icy i, used to love I icy. loved it but then are you like, team icy over team slurpee yeah we were always at am pm so oh, i don't okay. know i don't okay. really know if there's a major difference but some people that's... some people like uh that are like 
West Coast or grew up with 7-Elevens because there's no 7-Elevens where I grew up. So I never had a Slurpee. Mm -hmm. So I was always like TMIC. But that's like, you got to be careful who you say that to out here. They're just like, (laughs) Slurpees are dying. You're like, all right, we're adults. (laughs) That's really interesting because I have lived in Southern California my entire life. And I've never had an allegiance to a Slurpee over an IC. I just feel like it just depends where you're at. If you're at an AM PM or feel like a, you meet those people though, or am I just, is it just my girlfriend? Who's, who's I have like, not met anybody here. who feels this way. All right. I'll be honest. All right. All right. But... I was painting a broad stroke on everyone, <laughs> but I guess it was just. Uh, I also it... feel like they always have ICs at the movie theater. So I think of it there oh, okay. too. That's true too. Yeah. Good IC at the movie. And you got to mix Coke and cherry and. Mm-hmm. You can't Slurpee. ask them. Can you? Oh, is it self-serve at movie theater? I guess some of them are, mm-hmm. but it's always weird when it's not. And you got to be like, can you mix it? And they're like, you fuck. Like you ever go to a Froyo place and it's not self, like they put the toppings on for you. You're like, look, yes. I'm going to need more than that. And I know you're going to yes. judge me, but put it all on. Anyways. Yes. And there was for a brief and shining moment, a self-serve pink berry in Burbank. Oh, what? That's like and the Holy they- Grail. I mean, and then during COVID, they changed it. Uh, And then they, to my knowledge, never went back to the self-serve. Jeez, if anyone's got info on that. I mean, (laughs) because... Because yeah, that's like their thing. They're the ones that don't do the self-serve. They're the ones that were like, nah. Don't make me say it. Don't make me say it, you know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, look, I'm going to want graham crackers and fudge brownie bites in there, you know, or whatever the hell. It's, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. no fruit, please. I came here for all the bad stuff. Mm-hmm. um yeah but then but then at pink berry you're like oh you have strawberries on that i guess because i'm you know no <laughs> so, and they I can always tell play. they're like you sure you sure you want that you're like no you know uh-uh. i get apple jacks i get cotton crunch and i oh, get those you go little, cereal on top and i also get the little chocolate crunchy balls yeah you know they got the wet ones and the dry ones yeah, yeah. i never know what they're called <laughs> yeah. that's the other thing is i don't know what they're called so i gotta say the the Give thing, me the wet ones. The, the, wet, <laughs> like, the wet balls, please. They try and tell you what you're called and, and you just tune it out. You're like, I don't want to know what they're called. I know what I, I call. I think I have a mental block against learning yeah, yeah, what yeah. they're <laughs> called. <laughs> um, all right, cool. We 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 veered on a big tangent there, but uh <laughs> yeah, sure. It's all good. Um, but yeah, just quick and easy food. That's the route you're going. You're not you're not like you know now. What about the grocery? So the grocery shopping experience itself is do you have quarrels with that, or is it just like again? the time it takes to go to the store, check out and leave? Or is it all just relate to like, it it doesn't really have anything to do with the store. It's more of just like, I know this food isn't going to get cooked later. And it's both. It's both. I feel like I go into a grocery store and it's like, I just grab things. I just, I don't know. I've never been good at making a Mm. list. I've never been good at being like, this is what I need for like, I remember. So like, during the um like during 2020 i had a friend who uh like some friends were doing grocery shopping for this friend because they had had a baby and it was Mm -hmm. like we were just trying to help out and my friend gives me this list and i went shopping for her and i was like i will never (laughs) have a list like this for anyone i cannot even imagine being like I need all these vegetables. Like she had a plan. She just like knew what she was going to like. I just can't even get my brain just doesn't work that way. It's like, I don't speak the language of cooking. (laughs) Like I don't get it. (laughs) Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cause I'm the way of like, I have to make a list. And if I don't make a list, then I'll just get too much stuff. So it's like, I usually am like, okay, what are, what are the two meals I want to cook? I look up the recipes and then I, I, I put down a list of the food I need to get for that recipe. And then, but my issue is even with the list, I still end up buying extra shit. Cause I'm like, well, that'll look good to snack on. That'll look good. Mm-hmm. And I get home and I eat all the extra shit and I never actually yeah. make the fucking thing at the list. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that's the thing is that's why I go like, okay, I kind of stick to some of the main things that I always get. And yeah. then I do get sick of them. And I, I'm sure if you talk to me in a few months, I'll be like, I hate oatmeal now. Like yeah, I just, yeah. because I've been eating it too much, <laughs> but it's like, I go, okay, at home, we're not having that much fun with food. We're just, we're, this is just to not spend money and just cause it's quick and it's convenient. And then I can have fun when I go out to eat, you know, mm-hmm. I can, I can have a night at the cheesecake factory if I want to, you know, and 
<laughs> yeah, who doesn't like that? I mean, their their menus like twelve pages long. <laughs> so fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, that's funny. Um, yeah, it's tough. The grocery store, uh, the list thing, it's tough to to abide by. Also, it's just like sometimes I hate going to the grocery store and it's crowded, and then I'm just like, fuck this. I don't want to like have to battle through all these people to yeah. get what I want. So then I like to go to a grocery store like. 10 minutes before they close but then it's like a battle of the clock because i'm like i gotta get it and get out yeah it's which kind of which kind of saves me money because i'm like all right well i, I don't have time exactly <laughs> I, i've done that before where there was a time where i like got there when they were closing and i was like oh oh my god i've been yeah. training for this <laughs> like i've been watching the oh, thing you know, is, i do give a solid this <laughs> i do <laughs> like being in a grocery store like i like you know, mm. i'm someone who likes going to malls i like walking mm-hmm. around like if I'm in a, I, I am somebody who it's like, I think a lot of people will go to the grocery store once a week and like get everything they need. I'm more mm-hmm. of someone who's likely to like stop on the way home and like grab something. If mm-hmm. I'm do, like, be like, oh, I, I don't have any bananas or whatever. I'll like grab, or I don't have any, I can't even think of another thing, but yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> no, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like that, but, but, um, it sucks too when it's like, oh, I'm out of paper towels. I need to go to the grocery store to get paper towels. Yeah. And then you leave with the paper towels, but you also leave with a bunch of shit you didn't need to go in for in the first place. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's more of a tart. I saved the paper towels, things like that for Target. And Target does mm-hmm. have groceries, but I don't feel as lured in by the grocery section of yeah. a Target. It's kind of st- just sterile and unappealing. Yeah. Yeah. Target uh, isn't meant for groceries. I think it's just meant for. Unless you want, yeah, it's like alcohol and then chips, maybe. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like I if like, I'm having like a barbecue or like going to a barbecue or like whatever, seems mm-hmm. like a party favor type of place sometimes more so than like, like groceries. Anyone who shops their groceries at Target is a madman. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's more like it's nice when Target has groceries because sometimes you're like, I'm just, this is more convenient for me this Mm -hmm. week or whatever. I needed to go to Target. I'm also going to grab a few things, but yeah, like to go to Target and only buy groceries. I can't, who is that? Who is that person? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) It's not like it's cheap. Like it's not, (laughs) it's not cheap. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I don't think anyone, honestly, I think it serves its purpose of just being like an item here or there. You're not getting, they have it. They have it if you need it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think like uh, I usually try and equate when someone tells what they're the worst at who else is bad at that thing or who is like really good at that type of thing. So I'm trying to think like who would be good at like planning out their meals and uh, and sticking to like, you know, the grocery shopping schedule and stuff. And I want to say like, you know, a professional chef or something like that. But again, then it's like, I know so many people who cook for a living and then at home, they're like, screw it. I don't want to do it. Um but I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's why I do think of like, I think that's part of why I like, listen, I love everything that Guy Fieri does, but I, I particularly like Guy's grocery games because mm-hmm. like the, the challenges on that show, it feels like that's how I would accidentally shop. Like I'd be like, like the challenges, okay, you can only make <laughs> something with ingredients that start with B yeah, yeah and I'd yeah. be like oh you know I actually did that by accident anyway <laughs> yeah. like I, I, I have a weird like like a chopped basket yeah. of stuff I bacon like, buns and bologna and I made mm-hmm. some weird bologna pastrami sandwich thing yeah they have one, ones where it's like you can't shop on in the protein aisle and it's like it's just I love that show <laughs> yeah yeah no it's great uh I love guys uh grocery games isn't his son hosting it now or he's kind of like bringing his Um, son into the yeah he's often brought both of his sons on at different times doesn't gel well when that happens not a fan (laughs) look i love i I love guy i love the family i'm not knocking it but come on (laughs) like i'm into it let him intern somewhere else before you throw him into the into the trenches 
Uh, yeah, well, you know, I when I when I think is probably some of my favorite moments, and it, he's older now, but the mm-hmm. youngest son, I forget it. There's Ryder, and I forget the other kid's name. <laughs> yeah. I think Ryder is the little one. You like you've got like a journal of all of their <laughs> stats. Like I've got it here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I feel mean, like this. This is my shrine to Ryder. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I I like when he was like a little kid, and he would come on grocery games and just be like cute. It was yeah, just like a yeah, cute yeah, yeah. cameo, you know, cool. like. I like I I that works on me. I, I'm like yeah, yeah. okay, adorable. I feel, yeah. I feel you on that. <laughs> um, guy is the best. Um, he sure is. <laughs> all right, I think we'll we can just kind of wrap it there. But I will. Uh, I, I like to end the show with a, a little mini game that I call "Who's the Worst." And I usually I was gonna do. I had one pre-planned because I wasn't sure what you're gonna talk about. So I usually just we'll say like, oh, who's the worst Spider-Man? Who's the worst James Bond or something like that? And this week, we'll just do a twofer because I still like my original one. But then I thought of another one as we were talking. So real quick, do you know, who do you, who's the worst Eminem? Uh, if you could pick the worst hmm. Eminem. Like the characters? From I'm going to leave it up to interpretation <laughs> for you. You could pick flavor, you could pick character. You could do both. <laughs> I can only think of, in the in the commercials, you see red yellow and green i don't think we're seeing much of the other m&ms that's true now there's also if we're talking who's the worst m&m we're there's also so many varieties of like types of m&ms now mm, yeah but i can only think of the ones i like so much <laughs> um i think i'm gonna go characters and i'm gonna yeah. say the worst is the red m&m because mm. I don't know. I think he has a big head. He thinks he's the star. <laughs> and you know? Napoleon complex. For yeah, sure. it's a little bit much. I go, yeah, OK, yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah. You yeah. know, Chill, yellow is pulling his weight to yeah, yellow is doing yellow. all right. He's a little goofy, but he's pretty yeah. good. He's a star. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Um, and wait, also, I prefer peanut M&Ms, which is what the yellow m M&M m is. And those are, are definitely the best uh yeah. and then peanut oh wait peanut m&ms oh well there's right. also peanut butter m&ms which yeah i put peanut butter m&ms as one peanut m&ms as two and i know that's yeah. controversial but no I, I think i would agree um but i think if we're talking just like straight up original m&m the red m&m versus yellow mm-hmm. the peanut Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I love the peanut. Oh, peanuts way better. No one likes, no one prefers the plain M&M, especially when you have all these new varieties out now. No. Um, but they have put <laughs> some weird ones out that never hit. I think they did like a, like some weird, like jalapeno coffee oh, really? bean one or something. Yeah. They've done a lot of weird ones. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I'm, a, I'm something of a, of a connoisseur of the M&M flavors. I think yeah. my I think my least favorite M M&M and M has got to be the M M&M and M minis because it's just a even smaller version of the plain M M&M, and M, which is already mid, if you will, is what the kids say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did love the the minis when I was a kid because uh, I feel like I remember when they came them. out. You know, it was like it was so fun getting that little yeah. tube and then you just pour them in your mouth. Like uh, I think you gave into the marketing. The taste wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it was more about it was less about the taste and more about. Like almost similar to why fun dip is fun to eat. Mm-hmm. Like Definitely. it's they were just fun to pour in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, just a shot of sugar, basically. Yeah. <laughs> it was like yeah. Um, fair enough. Um, okay. My okay. So then the other one I thought of as we were talking, who's the worst grocery store chain then? If you could pick the worst grocery Ooh, store chain. Oh wow. Okay. Um hmm. I see, I like a lot of them. Okay. I like I'm trying to think because this is another where I my mind goes to positive. I go to the ones I like. <laughs> well, who's your, who's your favorite first? Um, and then you can give me a word I later. mean, well, it's interesting, right? Because there's chains and then there's individual stores, right? Where mm-hmm. it's like, to me, some of the Ralphs in the Valley are some of the nicest Ralphs I've ever been in in my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I think they're Ralphs like in Hollywood and stuff just it's such a different vibe. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you go in to, to one in the Valley, for some reason, they're beautiful out there. Okay. <laughs> but I also love, um, going into like a fancy grocery store, like a whole foods or a Lassen's or something, because they often will have like an area where you can sit. 
like especially when i'm on the like i'm on the road or something like i'll go hang out in the like little coffee shop area of a whole foods or Mm -hmm. whatever but i never grocery shop at a whole i never never bought anything to like make there um damn there's vons there's stater brothers that's a that's a california i think thing stater brothers um oh and a winco is incredible shit (laughs) I don't know Winco. I, can, I know Win Winco. Dick, I know Win Dixie. That's a very obviously southern thing. Yeah, uh, Winco is like they're not in. There aren't any around LA that I'm aware of. Um, but uh, <laughs> sorry, yeah, my mind is that? just like thinking of bits. It should be called Lose Dixie because they lost. Uh, anyways, whatever. Uh, I don't know. See, I'm not familiar. No, either. just Dixie is in the fucking mm. Confederacy. Oh yes, yes, anyways, got you. Go on, okay, sorry. yes, yes. <laughs> got it it was, okay. a, it was a dumb <laughs> wordplay joke yeah. like, okay yes um we're all familiar with the recent story with the chicks and their change of their name oh that's true that's true um okay bad grocery store i don't i don't want to say vons i want to say albertson's oh that's a uh, not that's because a good it's one. like horrible but it's just kind of like it's giving me nothing mm-hmm. like like i think that some grocery stores really shine like in their bakery section or something, you know, yeah, like yeah. a like Ralph's has some pretty good um like baked goods, muffins, whatever. Mm-hmm. And recently I went into the Albertsons and Los Feliz and I wanted wait, you to... like Ralph's baked goods? Sorry, this might be eh, I don't even know. I, I think I just that's feel like... that's the one part because I like Ralph's. Ralph's is near and dear to my heart because when I first moved here, it was literally across the street from my apartment. So I'm like, yeah, convenient as hell. And I just was like. I put up with all the bad stuff people have to say about it, but I got to say, I'm not a fan of the baked goods. Uh, Anyways, whatever. I mean, I guess I don't really, the thing is I don't really know what I'm saying when I say that (laughs) (laughs) I like, what do I like at Ralph's? But I'm going to base, I'm going to say Albertsons and I'm going to base it solely on the fact that recently I wanted to buy some blueberry muffins and I went into the Albertsons baked goods section and they had those blueberry muffins that have like the little like sugar crystals all over the top. Mm. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, don't do this to me. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I don't want that. Yeah. It doesn't add anything. It makes it taste cheap. Like it makes it taste like I bought it. Like, like it was a free giveaway. Some like, it doesn't I almost taste like, good. yeah, I almost like the smaller muffins that are almost like sweaty when you bite into them. Like they're yeah. like, you know, I don't know. I, I don't like I, I the think, big, crunchy, dried yeah. out ones, you know? Anyways. I think best grocery store muffin is Sprouts. They have really good muffins. Oh, okay. I like a Sprouts. Um, sprouts is oh, good. Oh, love, love a Sprouts. A sprouts sprouts yeah. is another place that's good if you like, if you're like, I got a couple hours to kill. We're somewhere that has like AC and like some places to sit. Mm-hmm. Um, usually you can, you can hang nice. out at a Sprouts. It's good to know. Good to know. It's interesting. I'm learning that I don't like grocery shopping, but I do like hanging out at the grocery store. That's fair. I like a good grocery. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's the vibe of the grocery store. It brings you bad about saying that about Albertsons. I mean, Not, yeah, Albertsons. So you don't I like don't, the baked goods at Albertsons? Is what you were getting at before I, I cut you? I just off? feel like Albertsons has no personality. Is okay. I guess what I'm saying? Like, I feel it like does, a Sprouts, very, a Ralphs. Like, we know the, the vibe. To me, Albertsons feels very Mormony, uh, and I, I don't. I'm not trying to put the Mormons down. I'm just saying, <laughs> I met a kid. His last name was Albertson. He was Mormon, and uh, <laughs> and he was weird, and uh, because he was a trampoline kid, he had a trampoline. Uh, we all we mm-hmm. anyway, whatever. This is a whole another tangent of it, a whole another time. But but I think his family owned Albertsons or some something weird like oh, that. Wow. And then okay. at least I think that's what I used to think. And then it was like, he always stockpiled food, but then I learned that the Mormons are supposed to stockpile food for like up to two years or something weird like that. Cause they have all these weird rules in their religion. Don't get me started. Oh, Anyways, I thought you were just going to say, cause they usually have so many children. No, it's like <laughs> a, they're required to have up to like a year's worth of, I thought it was more than a year, but I think it's only a year, uh, a year's worth of like, food supply at any given time in case some shit goes down or something i don't know why you'd think they'd be big costco people for that reason i guess so yeah i guess i just yeah because i didn't want to go obvious and say like food for less or something because food for Mm -hmm. less has a place in the in the market we Mm -hmm. need food for less and i think it's it's hack to say that that would be the worst one so i think i'm with you on the albertson yeah albertson my my only great 
My only gripe with Albertsons, and I don't know if they still do this or if this is just a thing at the Albertson near our place, is my mom used to come home with fried chicken from Albertsons. It was like they would Ooh, have, yeah, they would have like like a two piece, you know, you know, whatever. Like a, it wasn't just a rotisserie chicken. It was like they'd have like a two piece yeah. and a biscuit type deal or mashed potatoes, uh, which was always store fried chicken to me. rocks. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's always good. <laughs> uh, but I'm sure Albertson doesn't do it the best. I'm sure there's other ones out there that do yeah. it better yeah i mean i definitely we definitely got albertson's fried chicken when i was a kid yeah. that's another reason why i don't know how to cook um <laughs> it's good i mean it's like cheaper than kfc it's like mm-hmm. it, it's it's it, it's good for what it is for sure yeah um okay we we're supposed to end this podcast already but i, I got we we're on grocery <laughs> stores now and i'm just like <laughs> such a relatable thing uh do you ever partake in grocery store sushi yes Okay. I sure do. But here's the thing. Okay. For example, I've been talking up Trader Joe's, Mm -hmm. but Trader Joe's sushi is disgusting. It is Mm -hmm. so bad. There's certain things about, I'm like the more and more, (laughs) like I used to be, I'm pretty into Trader Joe's is cool, but I'm starting to wean away from them in certain areas. The cheese selection. I mean, I work at a cheese shop, so I'm a little like picky. It's horrible at Trader Joe's. Throw it away uh, is how I feel. But yeah, the sushi, no good. Keep no going. good, but if you go into like a Gelson's, it's always going to be mm-hmm. good. Anywhere that actually has the little sushi bar, like when you go into a Vaughn's sprouts, or Ralph's. Sprouts has good sprouts. sushi. Sprouts, have I had? Their, oh, I have had their sushi. Yeah, Wait, it's like. Does Ralph's have good sushi? It's the same as Vaughn's, pretty much. It's okay. like the same. I'm, I'm scared to eat there. Sometimes I'm scared to eat a uh, grocery store sushi. You got to be like, you got to know mean, when they. I like it when they put the timestamp of when it's made because then I'm like, yeah. all right, you're <laughs> all right, you're being awesome. You're giving me as big of a warning and it's on me if I choose to buy this that is nice I mean I definitely have like for years it was a go-to for me I lived sort of near a Vons and I would stop and grab Vons sushi and I enjoyed it and I remember I had never it's not like I, I just had never really mentioned that I do that and then I mentioned that to a friend or something and they were like ew like what and I was like <laughs> Off. It's yeah, grocery fine. store sushi. It gets a bad rap, but if you go in at the right time, it's yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, and it's yeah, check not, the dates. That's yeah. a good point. That's a good. I had pointer. a buddy that was like, I can't remember where it was. Uh, I think maybe it was when I, I don't remember where I was living when he told me, but he was like, oh, you got to go on Tuesdays because that's when they get the fish delivery, and like he knew the delivery for the oh. fish, so he's like that. Or you go in the next day after the delivery because that's when they make it and that's the freshest you can get it. So we were like, yeah, we'd had like our little routine. We'd go like every Wednesday. Um, yeah. It was pretty yeah. funny, but yeah. I, and then I was like, how does he know this information? Like he doesn't work there. It's like, he's just <laughs> telling me this, like, did he have an in? <laughs> um, maybe, maybe he was chatting with one of the sushi chefs in true. the back. Cause like, a lot of the time you, you could see the guy who just made it sometimes like yeah, they'll tell oh, you. there's a sticker that'll say like who made it and what date. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's like, uh, oh, don't ever get the sushi made by Sean. He sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Not quite the best. Um, all right. All right. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up here. It's almost hitting an hour. Um, uh, thank you, uh, for sharing, um, what you feel like you're the worst at, um, a moment of vulnerability. You suck at grocery shopping and cooking. No worries. Um, mm-hmm. any last little plugs or anything you want to tell the um... listeners? Yeah, just follow me, I guess. uh, Let's see. Oh, if you happen to live in Huntington Beach or surrounding areas, I will be co-headlining the rec room with my friend Logan Gunselman, August 26th. Um, And if you follow me on Instagram, uh, I'll start posting about that soon. Um, I think that's the next date I have to plug. Um, Other than that, yeah, just follow me. It helps. Cool. August 26th, Huntington Beach. Go check it out. If you're not in that area, do a little trip. Why not? Make it a day. Make it a day at the beach in Huntington. Beaches aren't bad there. They're yeah. nice. And then afterwards, go see Logan, who's also great, and Paige. <laughs> um, kill it at the rec room. All right. Um, thank you again for coming on the podcast, Paige. I really appreciate your time. Um, and we appreciate you all listening. We hope you tune in again. This is the podcast called I'm the Worst, but our fans are the best. See you next week.